Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites? Apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to Season 4 of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Venom Vlog, and today we are going to you know, dive back into the comic books, because obviously movie news is slow right now, and with everything that's going on in the world and productions being shut down, um, yeah, it's it's kind of, uh, you know, ghost town and when it comes to, you know, movie news right now, and movies being released, you know, being pushed back and stuff like that, so it's kind of a crazy time, a lot's going on out there, so please be safe, you know, and uh, definitely, let, you know, sound off in the comments, let me know you guys are still doing okay, and, uh, and how you're holding up, uh, because obviously these are pretty scary times right now, where people are kind of freaking out, and I'm not so much worried about what people are freaking out over, but I do worry when people freak out because uh, people are very unpredictable and they get desperate and they get scared. And uh, and I just, you know, it's it can be scary. So, you know, I just want to make sure you guys are OK. So let me know. Uh, but for today's episode, you know, since there's not a lot of movie news, I figured uh, and also scar regarding movie news. You know, the Batman just shut down production for about two weeks. I just saw that news today. So that might affect, um, you know, Andy Serkis coming over and maybe getting more work done in the editing room for Venom. I mean, I think he's already part of that. And I don't know if he was shooting during those two weeks for Batman, but at least opens up his schedule a little bit. And I don't even know if production or post-production for Venom is still going on. I would imagine because it's just a couple editors and producers in a room. So they may just, you know hunker down and kind of get through the work and stuff uh, but we don't know i have no idea i haven't heard anything so uh, i'll try to keep you guys updated if anything you know regarding that pops up uh, but for today like i said we're going to talk about some comic books and where we were doing this season is we're talking about Agent Venom, which is Flash Thompson, the bully that, you know, used to bully Peter Parker in high school. Uh, they became friends over the years. And if hopefully you've, you've been watching my videos since uh, season four started on episode 450, you can see a little history of, uh, you know, Flash Thompson leading up to the moment he became, uh, you know, our, our new Agent Venom. And, uh, and that's what's kind of cool about the series is that it's a very different take on Venom. Uh, Venom, you know, for the most part has been this like suit that, you know, bonds with somebody and it's, you know, and they kind of just free will do whatever they want, you know, whether it's a uh, Matt Gargan, who then ended up joining the Thunderbolts, so he was kind of part of a government thing in a way, uh, but Eddie Brock's kind of always been like a free agent, like running around, and before that it was on Peter Parker, so this is neat because this is a hero version of Venom, and it's them trying to tame the suit in a way, uh, but also uh, but also tr using it as a weapon, you know, and so Flash Thompson has decided to give himself to the U.S. government, He's lost the use of his legs, or he lost his legs completely during a battle uh, where he saved his, you know, squad and everything, and he took bullets for them, and uh, his legs had to be amputated. So when he came back to the U.S., he was kind of broken down, he was struggling, and he had Betty Brant there, you know, his love interest to, like, kind of help him bounce back. And uh, and then he got an, a job offer to be the new host of Venom, and apparently there was a host uh, you know, before, you know, Flash took over the job, but they had to kill that host. So what they've been doing is putting a chip in the person's head kind of suicide squad style and, uh, and they put a chip in their head and they you know when they mess up a mission boom goes the dynamite right so one guy is already dead and now flash is coming in and he's the second agent venom so we've already talked about his first couple appearances his first missions and now we're going to talk about is his ongoing series that ran for like 40 something issues and it was uh the first half written by rick remender who did like the first 19 or 20 issues and then cullen bunn who took the last you know 20 or so issues so we're going to go through all that this season on the show but we're also going to blend that into anti-venom stuff because obviously what's happening with eddie brock during this flash thompson era and that's him, you know, becoming anti-venom. So we, we've already covered the six ways to, to die or something storyline that like that Dan Slott did. I think it was Dan Slott. Maybe it was Mark Guggenheim. I can't remember. But those guys, uh, they, you know, the the writing trust of Spider-Man, they came together and they did this great storyline that we talked about where Eddie Brock is, uh, you know, gets saved by Mr. Negative, who he doesn't know is Mr. Negative, Martin Lee. And his powers, you know, like uh, Martin Lee's powers when he touches Eddie, transforms him into the anti-venom. And so now he's out there trying to drain you know, people and stuff who are, have some kind of a poison in their system. So if they're drug addicts or if they're Spider-Man and they have irradiated blood, you know, he wants to feed off Spider-Man and cure him. And, uh, and then also other symbiotes, he can burn off other symbiotes and cure them, uh, cure the human host of the parasite, uh, you know, as well. A parasite, you know. Parasite! So anyway, um, yeah, so this, it's been, it's an interesting time in the comics for these characters, for Eddie as Anti-Venom and Flash as, uh, as, Agent Venom. And so what we're going to talk about today is the first five issues of his Venom series, uh, which wasn't called Agent Venom. I referred to it as Agent Venom a lot, but I think the series was just called Venom. 
uh, but it was written by Rick Remender. And I think the first and second issue and the fourth and fifth issue are drawn by Tony Moore, who, if you're a longtime fan of Walking Dead, I think drew the first, you know, couple issues of Walking Dead uh, before, you know, uh, leaving the book to go do other things. And uh, and so his art is in the first couple issues of this. And then also Tom Fowler, I think, came in and was like a guest artist on issue three. So what this storyline is, is, you know, Flash Thompson, it starts off and it's like in another country and uh, it's being, you know, destroyed. Basically, it looks like a war zone and the jack-o'-lantern is there just bombing the place to crap. And you find out that the jack-o'-lantern is there on a mission from his father, who is the crime master. And so I don't know too much about these characters. Um, I know a little bit about jack-o'-lantern from you know, Spider-Man books he's popped up in, but I really don't know his origin. I don't know his real name. So rereading these was kind of fun because I'm like, hey, these are characters that I have a a knowledge of like I know they exist like crime master and but I, I was like oh I didn't know they were father and son or you know or this is a different jack-o'-lantern because I we saw in recent Venom comics uh, Donny Cates and Colin Bunn and stuff they've mentioned that there's been multiple jack-o'-lanterns there was even one that was resurrected during War of the Realm so um so I don't know if that's this one or, or what it is but uh but this was pretty neat because it starts off in its other country people are running for their lives and then these iron men show up they're like from the un and they're like stark built you know robots uh men in suits but the men were also trained in certain styles of combat uh by the u.s government i guess or, or world governments and uh, and united and so the un has their own police force i guess it is um which i don't know if that makes a ton of sense but i was still like yeah it's neat and they're using tark uh, stark tech to do it so you got you know him it's like all these guys in these armors and they're you know trying to go in and save these people but jack o lantern isn't having it and he actually has this thing where it's like candy he pulls out a bag of candy and he throws candy at one of the robots and i was like what's that do like and then uh, well not a robot actually there's a person inside like a like a iron man uh but i was like what's that gonna do and the candy just dis dissolves and eats through the metal and uh, and kills the pilot inside and i was like holy crap so he has these uh uh, these candy things that were made of something that can burn through most metals on earth and it's kind of some kind of vibranium or something like that or adamantium or something and it can it can if when you know developed in an acidic way it can melt through other things so i was like wow i wonder if that works on wolverine um but it was pretty neat i was like man that's pretty wild stuff and the scientist who created it used to work for crime master and he escaped and that's kind of who jack o lanterns after so he's trying to track this guy down the scientist so they can complete this formula um and then also you know use his knowledge to help them with their criminal empire uh so it's, it's pretty neat and then when it starts off like that you have jack lantern going in people are dying and then there's this family that uh you know venom comes in at the last second agent venom drops in and saves them and fights back against jack-o-lantern and he's using the venom suit but as they're fighting you realize that flash has been out here looking for the fight and being out here for a while so he's nearing the end of his like 48 hour run kind of and uh, he's starting to lose control of the symbiote and as he's fighting you know jack-o-lantern he gets pissed off and he goes full venom you know and he loses complete control and you see it like his voice like the dialogue for his voice like shrinks like the caption shrink i'm like oh that's so clever that's i love when you know letterers like really add those, those kind of the flares to them and style to them so it was like you see you know uh his voice in his head shrink and the venom voice grow louder and I was like, that's pretty cool. And so the Venom suit just goes nuts and it starts ripping things apart and it grabs a grenade, pulls the pin out and shoves it right in Jack-o'-lantern's mouth and blows his jaw off. I was, <laughs> I was, uh, I was like, wow, okay. I didn't see that coming. And then he survived. Uh, so yeah, he was like, he blew half his face off. His teeth are missing. Uh, there's blood coming everywhere. And uh, yeah, so his helmet took, I guess, a lot of the br brunt of the explosion, but it was still like, you know, between his mouth and the helmet, and it still blew up like half his face his lips are gone like his nose is blown off and i was like his eyebrows are singed like he looks like a freaking skeleton he's still alive i was like holy crap so he gets on his board and he gets away and i was like good god like this book really started off with the you know with their feet on the ground running because uh and no pun intended i know that's not a joke against flash thompson obviously but you are making us look bad really really good and what i love that rick remender did throughout these five issues is that he actually takes moments to focus on Flash Thompson. So like when Flash Thompson gets back, you know, his commanding officer's like, hey, we lost track of you again. You know, uh, are you okay? We saw your, you know, adrenaline spike. You know, did you lose control? And he was like, nope, didn't lose control at all. Um, and uh, and so his guy, kind of his keepers, um, his government keepers are keeping a really close eye on him in this, uh, this storyline. And, uh, and so Flash, when he gets back to New York though, after everything he went through and barely saving his family and seeing this country being destroyed and, uh, and and getting away barely with his life and almost losing you know access to the costume already in the first issue he decides i'm going to go to 
an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting at this church down the street. And when he gets there, the only way into the church is steps. There's no like a handicap walk, uh, you know, ramp going up into it. And uh, because it's like an old church, you know, and they haven't modernized it or updated it. And uh, I, I found that that moment really heartbreaking. And I, and I think Flash did something like, you know, somewhere God's laughing at me right now. He thinks this is funny, this this uh, staircase in front of me. It's, it's a challenge. He wants me to overcome it, but I'm not willing to do that tonight. I just want to go home and go to bed. So he wheels off and doesn't go to the AA meeting um, because well, he kind of has a new addiction now too. So it's, uh, so that, again, showing that, that side of Flash. And that's what Rick Remender did really good here. And in this run is that they have amazing action with these intense moments that you're like hey why don't you just like you know put a grenade in his face uh because because as a writer myself like i'm sitting there like come on why are you dragging this fight out just kill him and then he tries to kill him and he survives i'm like that's great writing like that's great writing because you're going to sit there and read this book and go come on it's jack-o-lantern venom can take that guy out so he does he tries to execute him basically and you know and then that was a cool twist was all right now have him survive it like you don't really need to explain it it's comic books but have his face get blown off and somehow he survived. Uh, and I, I thought that was fantastic. I was like, wow, that's what I was thinking in my head is why doesn't he just kill him? And then he does try to, and then Jack O'Lantern just tough and he got away. So uh, that was great. I mean, this whole book, it's like from here on, it's like the first five issues. You have uh, Flash Thompson, the second issue, go into the jungle and he fights Craven the Hunter and Craven stabs him with the spear, just like he did with Spider-Man uh, during Craven's last hunt. That poison gets in Flash. And so he's trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. And he's trying to dif differentiate, you know, his personality and the symbiote's personality, which is also slightly affected by the drug. And uh, it's it was great. So he's like in the woods, in the jungle, like, you know, predator style, and he's being hunted by Craven. And I, I love that the issue just started off like, Boom, here's Craven the Hunter. He stabs uh, you know, Venom, and now they have to do battle, you know, from here on out. And uh, and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And I love Craven the Hunter. He's my favorite Spider-Man villain. So uh, when I saw this fight, I was like, yes, issue two, this is amazing. And so when Venom barely gets away from that battle, uh, his suit does slink off from him. And he's like, that's it, the suit's gonna leave me. You know, we we defeated Craven and he's gone now, but uh, the suit's still gonna, you know, now it's free. And I'm just going to lay here with the chip in my head. And any moment now, the government's going to press that button. And then it kind of ends, you know, where the guy is getting ready to press the button. Uh, but then the suit comes back and he's like, hey, wow, you know, it, it came back. That's amazing. But while it, while it was off him, someone, you know, crime master hacked into a satellite. He's like, I want to see who blew off my son's face. And he finds the... A, 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 the topographic image of the jungle zooms in and sees Flash Thompson laying there, does a facial scan, finds out who he is, finds out about Betty, finds out about his loved ones. And he's like, okay, now we know who our enemy is and we're going to use this information against them. Meanwhile, Flash has no idea that's happening. The suit rebonds with him and he's like, hey, you could have gone away. Like you were free. And the suit's like, well, we kind of starting to like you. And, uh, and so their relationship is starting to, to form here. And, uh, and so they get up and they go off and they go try to track down these, uh, these skeletal looking guys, you know, who are like these drug runners in this uh, jungle area that he was, you know, down here doing a mission for, for the government. And he takes too long. It's past his 48 hours because he was blacked out for a while. And, uh, and so the government guys press the red button. And that was another thing. I was like, why, like, why are they giving him so many chances? If they killed the first soldier so willingly and they keep threatening that they're going to kill Flash every time he comes back from a mission. Um, why don't they just do it? And in this issue, they do. <laughs> they full on press the red button. But, you know, at that point, uh, Flash has taken the helicopter with all the, you know, weapons or whatever he was down there to get. And he gets blackmailed by Crime Master. And Crime Master says, look, bring that stuff to New York at this location. Uh, instead of bringing it to your government people in New York, fly it, fly it to us. And uh, or we're going to kill Betty Brandt. And so he's like, oh, great. My girlfriend's already at risk. They found out who I am somehow. And, you know, he doesn't know about the satellite. So he brings the helicopter to them and turns off his inter, you know, intercom. So he can't, you know, get in touch with the, his people. And, uh, and they decide, you know what, we're not taking any more chances. They press the button. But at this point, the symbiote, after going through a host that already had his head blown up, um, has now learned how to extract that chip. So when, you know, Venom walks away with Betty Brandt, he, he gives the helicopter over and he takes Betty and he leaves. Uh, the symbiote leaves the grenade or leaves leaves the bomb from his head near the uh, you know near the helicopter. So the bad guys still lose out on a lot of their stuff because the helicopter explodes. And they think that was Flash Thompson's doing, but it wasn't. It was an independent thought from the symbiote. Uh, but meanwhile, the government people are like, we just killed him. We blew him up, and uh, and they thought it was over. And they're like, all right, we got to send in, send in a team to get the the suit now. And then Flash Thompson shows back up at their hideout, and he's like, wait. 
how, how are you? And then, and Flash like, yeah, sorry. I, uh, I, you know, I, drew, I destroyed the weapons or whatever, you know, he's like, uh, you know, I don't know what happened. You know, I, I dropped them off and they, I destroyed them. So uh, I'm sorry, I failed the mission, you know, and if you need to reprimand me, blah, blah, blah. And the guy's like, look, man, I'm not your coach. I'm not trying to motivate you to do things here, like to score a touchdown. He's like, I'm here to save the freaking world and, and stop bad guys. And he goes, you can't just lose, you know, precious cargo and then it get destroyed. He's like, we needed that we those weapons as much as the bad guys did. That would give us an edge over the the bad guys of the world. So, you know, you kind of screwed us on this one. And and so, uh, but meanwhile, the, you know, the his liaisons and the government are like, well, we can't really, don't piss him off too much because now there's nothing to stop him. He doesn't know the chip's not in his head. The suit might, or somehow, maybe he does know the chip's not in his head, but, uh, but they're like playing this cat and mouse game almost. And they're like hiding secrets from each other. But Flash just doesn't know. He doesn't know the suit did this. So he's like, hey, thanks for not pressing the red button when I went, you know, dark and I turned off my intercom. I appreciate that so much. And they're like, yeah, no problem. You know, we're trying to have a little bit of faith in you. So, you know, just separate from the suit and go back to your life. And then, you know, we'll get you back in the game soon enough. And they're like, you know, and they kind of don't want to. They're like the scientist there and the government guy is like, we don't know if we want to rebond, you know, the two of them because uh, they could be a liability now. And how are we going to get another chip in his head without telling him, he doesn't have the chip in his head, you know, it's like, so there's like that kind of tension going on. And I, I, again, Rick Remender doing a great job. And then the last issue of it, the fifth issue is all about Flash Thompson. I don't think he puts the suit on in that issue at all. I think it's mostly him and Betty and them working on the relationship and these very human moments. Peter Parker gets involved and, uh, oh no, actually that's not true. He does uh, don the suit. Uh, he goes and grabs the suit because Betty gets kidnapped and she's gonna die, but he's starting to lose control of the suit because he has nothing really there to, you know, control it. You know, there's no way with the chip out, not in his head and everything. So the suit is getting pissed. It's it's getting aggravated, fighting Jack Lantern. Then Spider Man gets involved, and so there's these great moments with Peter Parker and uh, and uh, you know and also Flash, and they're like sitting on the couch next to each other, and they're talking about Betty, and you know, like and uh, and talking about their friendship. And then Betty gets kidnapped by Crime Master, so they got to go after her, but independently as Venom and as Spider Man. And then they meet on the battlefield, and they start fighting each other and going at it but venom is you know or flash is trying really hard to push through the suit and try to get through to spider-man and saying like look you're my hero like you need to go save you know betty she's at this warehouse and, and spider-man's like hero you're freaking venom like i you know i don't know who's the host of you now after matt gargan but i know it's not eddie and he goes so i don't know who you are man but i i hate your guts and, and you're just as much of a poison you know to the society as, as every other venom was before you and he's like so i'm gonna go save betty and so luckily spider-man does he rescues betty and it, it gives you know flash he gets there too late and the building explodes he's like no i failed betty i failed betty and there's this great heartbreaking moment where he's kind of like i failed he's like i like and he's yelling at the suit like because he put sedatives in it and he's like, I need you to stop taking control. Like we need to work together. And so again, building that relationship with the two of them and trying to use it to go save Betty and they don't. And the suit I feel um, is now understands Flash after seeing him that sad uh, of losing, over, you know, losing Betty potentially. Luckily, Spider-Man shows up and he actually saved her. So she didn't die, which was great because I, I love Betty Brant as a character. Uh, but uh, but seeing Flash like looking out and being, you know, heartbroken over it kind of reminded the suit a little bit of, you know, Eddie losing Anne. And I was like, this is great. This is the parallels there. That scene was really, really well done. Again, Tony Moore's art and Tom Fowler in the third issue and Rick Remender's writing. These first five issues are amazing. They can be collected. I think they're in a book called The Rick Remender Collection, Volume 1. And it has like the first 12 issues of this series. Um, and then also like a What If Deadpool Venom one, which we already talked about on the show. So I think that's all like in one big hardcover you can get uh, digitally or in print, I think still. Um, but uh, but also there's, I think, smaller versions of the trade where you can just get the first five issues of, that I talked about here in a small soft cover as well. So yeah, I mean, this is amazing. If you haven't read the Agent Venom stuff, I'm loving it. I'm already well past this now. I'm, I got past, uh, I'm almost at the end of the Remender run and I'm going to be starting the Cullen Bun soon, but I don't want to get too far ahead because I still want all this to be kind of as fresh in my mind as I can get it. So, uh, so yeah. And if I missed anything, you know, and you read it, let me know down below. What are some of your favorite parts of this storyline? Um, have you read it? You know, are you interested in reading it? 
I say give it a chance. If, you, if you're reading the current Venom comic and you're liking it, I think you might like this too. I mean, I like this more, obviously, uh, so far, but it's, it's really great. I love Flash Thompson as a character. I think that's a great setup for a Venom character. Making him part of the government is also really neat. That's also something Donny Cates is, you know, tying into his run, where the government has been using Venoms, you know, since you know since Vietnam or something like that. Um, so yeah, it's 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 cool how this is all kind of connecting and going backwards. Like I read this series when it first came out, all the way up until the. Um, the, the, the issue 13 when it was like the new Fantastic Four kind of thing where it's like X-23, uh, Alejandra, Ghost Rider, uh, Red Hulk, and uh, Venom, Agent Venom all team up. I've read up until that point, but I, I haven't read after that. So uh, so this was like, oh, I'm, I remember. I'm kind of familiar with reading these the first time when they came out like, you know, eight or nine years ago, but or maybe a little bit longer. But uh, I was like, yeah, I kind of remember this, but, uh, but it's not fresh in my head, so it was great to reread it. But uh, but it, I'm loving it. It's so good. It's it's the the like I said the human moments there and the action just blend together so well. But after this, you know, there's uh, issues six, seven, eight, and nine, and those all tie in in some way to the uh, Spider Island storyline. There's like an epilogue too that ties into it. So those issues we're gonna talk about later on when we do a Spider Island episode. But there's actually a lot of great content uh, in the comics between now and then. Earlier in the episode, I mentioned Eddie Brock. Where is he during all this? Well, he's anti-Venom, right? So the next few uh, episodes that we do, I'm going to try to bang them out really quickly, are all the remaining anti-Venom stories that lead up to Spider Island. So now that we've done a three or four episodes on Flash, we're going to do about four or five episodes on Eddie and his new persona as uh, anti-Venom. And you're going to see what he's going through right now. And then we'll culminate this. Maybe by the time I move to Florida, we'll do a big Spider Island episode, you know, great when I get into town and settle into my new apartment. Uh, so yeah, so this week's going to be fun. We're going to talk about a lot of anti-venom stuff and then we'll build up to Spider Island very, very soon. And then any movie news that pops up between now and my move, I'll try to cover for you guys. But right now, this may be the only videos you get and maybe we'll do a live stream later this week, like Thursday or Friday before I leave town. Uh, we'll try to do that too and try to get everything, you know, to say one good goodbye. Because once I hit the road, I'm going to be on the road for at least a week. Um, and I'm trying to get an apartment right now and it looks like I might have one. I'm just waiting to get approved. So fingers crossed for me that I get approved and uh, and if that happens I got to move in on the 28th of March into that apartment in order to uh, you know honor the deal that I, I'm making with them so if that's the case I got to hit the road maybe even sooner than I thought uh, so uh, yeah that's a lot of stuff coming up a lot of things I got to do so that's why I'm glad I'm able to, to dedicate today to get these episodes out to you guys and I'll try to upload them out throughout the week but any new movie news that pops up I'll try to cover that too. So thank you all very much for watching the show. As always, again, let me know what you think of this run down in the comments below. We'll continue our conversation down there. See you all in the future. Peace.